way of life Just a gypsy with a full tank of gas Not sure where my next meal's from Put down the pedal and sing into the sun Wednesday weather wise, Mother Nature's doing her best to cock block Jen today. We'll see how that turns out. We've got special guest Tom Myers in the studio. How you doing this morning, brother? Uh doing all right, man. Uh thanks for having me in. Yeah, thanks for showing up on the crappiest weather day yet this year. You know what? It uh it, it suits my uh, it suits my personality. So I I, f- I feel right at home in, in <laughs> shit weather. So <laughs> You are that, uh, what was it, the Munsters, the house was always gray and gloomy, no matter, <laughs> no matter what, the, the sun was shining anywhere else, it was gray and gloomy when I, the house. When I decided to find my comedy voice, I, the, the Munsters was first and foremost in my head, actually. Right, okay. So that... <laughs> are you Jewish? You know, Jewish comics are always, sell, you know, gray, life is horrible, you know, kind of depressed and... 
paranoid. Are you that? Are you are you Jewish? No, a, a worse. What's that? I'm I'm, I'm Catholic, so oh, I'm, I'm always God, yeah. I'm always led to felt guilty about er, er, everything afterwards. Sackcloth and ashes. You should you know penance and all that stuff. <laughs> I stopped going to confession when they started telling me I had to go back to sacrificing chickens and lambs to repent for my sins. You know, three Hail Marys weren't going to get it for me. Oh, but that's the, that's the fun stuff, though. Oh, what, killing the chickens or the fun stuff that leads to needing to sacrifice a blood sacrifice? Both, because you have the killing of the chickens and... You can you can get a good meal afterwards. Yeah, but then your neighbors get kind of pissy. They don't like to hear all that screaming and the bloody chicken bodies running around the backyard. My neighbors are a bunch of assholes, regardless. So I'm not really concerned. You're about looking that. at this anyway, right? <laughs> We're going to find out the story of Tom Myers. You have had since just since I have known you, you have had one of the most intriguing life journeys I've ever seen. So the mayor of Falston, which there really is no mayor, but everybody in Falston knows you because of your tour of duty as a clerk there at the Seven Eleven. Yeah, then, we're, we're, we're going to go over the entire. We're going to go over the autopsy of my entire okay. uh, career. Then from there, <laughs> from there, you run for Harford County Board of Education. Yes, I, I actually did. I, I I'm still flirting with uh, you know uh, political involvement. Then you are now a partner in a Mexican restaurant, correct? See, si. I mean chess. The whitest, nerdiest guy on the planet, <laughs> and, and you are you co-owner of a Mexican restaurant. All well, the listen, while. listen. I, I it, that's because you know I'm the only one who uh, works there whose family actually stole Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona from Mexico in the 1800s. I so gotcha. I do have a connection there. And all the while you are pursuing all of these endeavors, you are mm-hmm. uh, living a pretty full comedy career. Uh, you, you get around. I came up with actually how this led. I got to see you for the first time uh, this past last Wednesday yeah. night mm-hmm. uh, here at the Main Street Oyster Bar, I believe is the name of it, in Bel Air. Yep. A friend of ours, T. Brad Hudson, was headlining. You Very were funny on, guy. You were on the bill and, uh, you know, chatted it up, and now here you are. So uh, how do you go from uh, – the mayor of Falston to uh, <laughs> running for elected office to owning a, a Mexican restaurant and still be able to travel the way you do. You've been everywhere from California to New York to Florida, uh, entertaining and performing. You've actually didn't you go to the thing in Vegas too? I've been to uh, I've been to Las Vegas. Well, I. I There's took, a contest or something out there you went to. The World to. Series of Comedy. That's what I'm referring to. I have, I've actually I've taken three trips out to Nevada, but I've been, to, I've been to Las Vegas a total of four times. I made two visits to Las Vegas in the same trip. Got you. I got you. As road schedules go, you fly into a place, you spend some time in a particular place, you go to some out-of-the-way po, uh, podunk nowhere where, you know, they're the main reason they're pissed off is because you know Sons of Anarchy isn't on their local PBS station. Yeah. Then you come. Um, then you come back down to Vegas. Right. And then, you know. And so you've been around. You've done a lot. You've actually got. Is this a CD or DVD? That is a. That is the second CD that I've put it's out. A the CD, first okay. one. Yeah. The first one I put out uh, about ten years ago. This is the newest one. Just put it out. Uh, I just put it out a year ago. Awesome. That is sort of the best. Uh, representation of what I do. Of course, I've written numerous stuff since then, so I'm working on putting another one out now. And so we'll talk more with Tom Myers, and we will get the uh, what version did you say you were going to give us? The uh, was it the Reader's Digest version? <laughs> uh, the autopsy of your career. That's what it was. It wasn't the you said you were going to give us the autopsy of your career. Uh, and where you're headed next? What your plans are? Uh, it sounds like you may be headed down the path of that fellow who was a writer for Saturday Night Live and now is a representative from out in Minnesota. Who? Oh, Al Franken. Al Franken. Yeah, yeah. you could be our own Al Franken. He's a, he's a, sen- he's a United States senator. Yeah, just won re-election in a uh, land not a landslide, but I mean it was it was a lot more decisive this year than right. Yeah. And to think the guy, the, the jokes that that clown used to kind of write were he was a hilarious writer and even performer. He performed yeah. a couple mm-hmm. of times on Saturday Night Live. And now he's probably doing a better job running the country than anybody else. Well, because a lot of people like him there because you know he's, for the most part, focused on doing 
local media. Like he doesn't go on the national talk shows all the time and do stuff like you know a lot of the people that you know about like you know John McCain or, mm-hmm. or you know Lindsey Graham or you know Chuck Schumer or any of those guys. He's pretty much, with some exceptions, stuck to doing local media. And you know, from I've never been to Minnesota, but the the Minnesotans that I've met and talked to, I mean, they. You know, they, 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 well, I'm sure this is true of all areas. They like when you focus on when you focus on them well, and sure. you focus on your own needs rather than national aspirations. Yeah, you 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 have to. Uh, what was the uh, quote from that movie Paulie Shore was in? Uh, think globally, act locally. You know, and when right. you're a U.S. senator, you've got to think the bigger picture. But you right. still have to make your decisions based on what's in the best interest of your constituents. You know what I'm saying? And right. Well, how does it fit my backyard? That's what you got. Yeah. That's what you got to answer. How does it help me? And the fact that you started rattling off all of these names, you have to understand something. Our listeners, yeah, Al Franken. The only way they know him is from Saturday Night Live. Most of them just learned he was a United States senator, <laughs> and every name after that you mentioned, they have no idea who they are. <laughs> Right, yeah. yeah. They're politicians, <laughs> folks. <laughs> They're the people we all hate, which Tom is trying to become one. I've invited him to the show to try to encourage him not to become a politician. You're way better off as a comedian. Just stay where you <laughs> stay here with us. Don't cross over to the other side. Believe me, I've made more. Mo- I've made more money doing comedy yeah. than I have uh, than I have in politics. I mean, a, a well, lot. You haven't ever been elected to a, an a, Hey, you haven't been elected yet, have you? To any office? As a matter of fact. Uh, I uh, I was appointed uh, last year to the um, Harford County uh, Democratic Central Committee, and th- were elected wow. were elected uh, in primaries in the okay. gubernatorial primaries, and I was elected to my first full uh, four year term in the primary uh, last June. Okay, so, so I am technically an elected official. Right on, but, but, but without the uh, without the retirement plan and the health insurance, yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a more down to earth version. You of, uh, truly <laughs> are a public servant. Yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, you're not like these other guys that are collecting big ass checks. Um, well, that's I feel like I'm sitting next to somebody now. I thought I was just sitting next to the very road weathered comedian Tom Myers. I had no idea. I was sitting next to the elected official Tom. Am I supposed to call I, I you will, your honor or your holiness or something? What am I supposed to call you? I will very quickly change your opinion about that over the course of this show. Okay, very good. <laughs> really quickly change that. Very good. Hey, uh, there's a lot of things going on. It is the Thanksgiving season. Today is the biggest travel day of the year. And Mother Nature is wreaking havoc here in the Mid-Atlantic. We'll talk about that. It seems like here on the I-95 corridor, we're going to be like right on the edge of whether it's rain or snow. The further west and north you go, from Baltimore City up towards the PA line, out towards um, Shippingsburg and things of that nature, the snow is going to get deeper and heavier i don't think to call it more than four inches so if you can leave tomorrow stick around listen to the walrus and jen show that ignorant bitch ain't here today because her man's coming home because he's been away since april serving in the military and oh i've got a you know nom, 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 nom. gotta landscape the garden so when he walks through my lilies you know he doesn't prick himself on a thorn of course knowing my luck you'll you'll say that i'll be doing that she'll come in here and i haven't met her but i something tells me she could probably beat the living shit out of me she right could beat now. the living <laughs> shit out of me and you both <laughs> that woman's so mean my dogs are afraid of her and i got pit bulls <laughs> you'd enjoy it though i think oh sure thank you ma'am may i have another <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem. She knows I would like it, and she doesn't have that much energy. <laughs> like, I can't beat you as much as you want beaten. I'm not even going to start. She just <laughs> gives me that dirty look and rolls her eyes. Uh, her man, Andy, has been in um, boot camp, I believe, or military training for the Air Force out in Texas, and now he was doing some uh, training in Arkansas. Comes home today, and he's home for the holiday weekends till like, December the 3rd. So she's making preparations for him to get home. 
And uh, I guess, I, yeah, we can talk about that because his mother doesn't know he's coming home, so he's surprising oh, his mama for okay. Thanksgiving so you're, party. So, you, so you, you basically just fucked up the entire surprise by announcing it over the, uh, well, they have reassured, over the airways. Well, they have reassured me that his mother is not technology enough advanced that she listens to internet radio, and if she was, she wouldn't listen to this bullshit anyway. <laughs> she'd listen to, like, Diane Ream or something yeah, on NPR. Listen, <laughs> yeah, she'd listen to me and then start praying. You know, <laughs> dear God, please help his poor soul. He's going to split the gates of hell wide open if you, if we, you we, don't save his wretched soul. We were joking. I'm sure. I mean, you've actually done shows for people in the military, like in Absolutely. front of military people. Absolutely, best audiences I've ever performed in front of. Oh my the God! Best. Yeah, because you know, when you have lived the life of a lot of our military personnel, which means your life, has, you may not have been on the front lines carrying a gun. But you were in a hot zone, you know, right. where you, you weren't walking around in a, a combat helmet and flak jacket for no reason. Yeah. You know, your life was in danger. And when you live your life daily like that, it changes you. It gives you, um, some people it damages, and that's what PTSD is, uh, right. post-traumatic stress disorder. But for everyone that comes home, it changes them in a way because you have this sense of, Man, life could end at any moment. You want to live life to the fullest. And those folks are always seeking a laugh. When you live with that kind of tension in your life every day, the biggest and first thing you want is a little stress relief and a little laughter in your life. And that's why when guys like Jay Leno and Al Roker, who have you know publicly made trips over there here recently, yeah. uh, do that, that's why they get such a great response. Franken did seven USO tours. Yeah. Seven. See, that's the, I'd love to do one of those. I, I don't. I've submitted a couple of times. Yeah, I have as well. I'm mm. not the kind of guy that you know they look forward to. Say, I'm more the kind of guy that incites a riot. You know, when I go over, I'm going to start. Well, let picking. me tell. Uh, can I? Can I speak to that though? Sure. I have military people in my family. A lot of them. Like I've have ancestors and relatives who've fought in just about every single conflict. That so you're this, like Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> One of your family members has fought and died in every war America's ever been in. <laughs> Lieutenant Tom. Lieutenant Tom. <laughs> well, I'm remarkably I'm the, I'm the first male in the Myers family to not actually join any of that. But you know, regardless, I know firsthand that you know uh, the, uh, the, the troops are dedicated, and they have probably some of the sickest senses of humor of any person on this planet. Well, that was kind of what I was trying to say without going right. Yeah, they've got a twisted sense of humor, and I usually do very well with it. I know. I, w- I can talk about the sickest, craziest crap on the planet, and they all start cheering, right? When normal people that I tell that joke to run to the bathroom throwing up, that, that <laughs> kind of stuff. You know? Oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. Oh, that's all. Yeah. That, that, that's child play compared to some of the stuff that I've done over the years. Well, you've been doing this a lot longer than I <laughs> right. have. Mm-hmm. You've been doing this quite a while, you know. Yeah. I, I'm a newbie when it comes to it. Uh, I've really been doing comedy. When did I start? 2008. So I've been doing this six years. Yeah, well, that that thing we did at the uh, at the Falston uh, Fire Hall. Yes, you were for I wouldn't uh, say Joe were, Woods. Yeah, uh, my councilman. Yes, uh, I wouldn't say that you. Uh, I wouldn't say that you were green necessarily at the time, but I mean you were. Still... I was still very new because that was two thousand nine, two thousand. Right. Yeah, was that two thousand eight? It was. Oh, it was oh nine. Oh nine. So mm-hmm. yeah, I had just started the year before. So you right. Know, uh, but I had a lot, a lot of help. There was a lot of people like you. And right. when I first started, I mean, people. T. Brad Hudson gave me time. Uh, Erwin Weinstein would give me time, and or Erwin Lori, as most people yeah. know him. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Erwin, didn't mean to throw your real name out of there. Apologize. Um, they all gave me time, but they were all also working comedians who gave me constructive criticism. Right. You know, yeah. I, I don't know whether it was they seen that I was. Uh, willing to learn, or if they saw something, they whatever. Or maybe they just wanted me to get better, so I'd move on because they didn't want me around them anymore. <laughs> right. Know? Well, this guy scares. Sonny Fuller told me one time I scared the hell out of him. Sonny Fuller. Sonny Fuller. So when I first wait a minute, when I first started doing comedy, I was going up, and everybody told me you can't be who you are. You're, you will scare people on stage. Pull your hair back, put your eyeglasses on, put on a sweater and a sport coat, lose the sleeveless t-shirts, cover up the tattoos, 
and clean the beard up. You know, don't go up right. there as who you are. Well, I was very uncomfortable doing that. Yeah. But I was trying to find my space. And I was doing Magobi's new talent contest and every open wow. mic I could hit. And the wife was telling me, listen, you are so tense and so uncomfortable up there like that. Right. We've got to do something else. So one Magoobie's joke night, I said, I'm going as That may my- have been the first time I saw you, actually. I'm going as myself, <laughs> and I've left the do-rag on and my biker cut, <laughs> and I walked up there. Now, Sonny was hosting it. Sonny was yeah. the MC. Yeah. And now he was talking about his girlfriend and uh, performing oral sex on her and how he liked to do that. And, 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 and in other words, his uh, G-rated set. Yeah, his G-rated set. You know, <laughs> what he does at bar mitzvahs and kids' parties. <laughs> and he was talking about how, you know, after performing oral sex on her, he didn't wash his face. He was like, yep, I'm not washing my face. Well, I walk up on stage after he does that joke, and he doesn't know who I am because he hasn't put it together yet. Because that was the first time I introduced myself as the walrus. And so... He says up next to Walrus, where I walk up in that biker outfit with sunglasses on and sniff the microphone and go, Hey, Sonny Fuller, I think I know your girlfriend. <laughs> and the entire crowd busted out laughing. Everybody but Sonny Fuller. I remember that now, yeah. <laughs> and after, oh, then when I went to start, start talking in my normal voice, everybody knows my voice. And he realized it was me. And so when I walked off the stage, you know how he always has to shake your hand, you know, the MC when you're doing Mike Nights. Like right, that. yeah. So I stand up till he comes back to shake his hand. And as he shakes my hand and whispers in my ear, he said, I'm kicking your ass after this is over. And I, what <laughs> I, thought, he, I thought he was mad about the girlfriend joke. And I'm like, there's no way he's mad about that joke. Right. So after he introduced the next comment, he come down, sat down next to me. He said, for 45 minutes, I wondered who the serial killer with the biker rags on was. He said, I had no idea it was even you, dude. Well, you know, it, it is Parkville. so It was yeah, Parkville, it was, yeah. so it, was, it wasn't like that you stood out at all, really. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was just another terrifying <laughs> individual that sh- sh- you know, staggered at into the, the bar. Yeah, <laughs> back when McGoobies was there. Yeah. But, yeah, that was the funny thing to do. I'm going to kick your ass. Like, Why did I, I'm sorry about the joke. No, it wasn't a joke, fool. I thought you. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, because what, what's really striking me about that is because as intimidating as you know, your, your, per, your onstage personality is and your look is, the fact that you were still scared of Sonny Fuller, who's probably <laughs> dwarfs you in comparison. Yeah, you gotta I love Sonny to death, but, I mean, it, the, the fact that you were still scared, you gotta scared remember- of him, it, it, says something about, it says something about Sonny. Oh, Especially, sure. yeah, those little ones are scary. Oh um, yeah, and the fact you remember that time was prior to me losing the weight. I was ninety pounds, eighty pounds heavier at the time. Right, I was running around two ninety five instead of two fifteen. You know, <laughs> and so yeah, I was even bigger and sunny. Well, I, well, I also don't like to offend people. You know, I make fun and jest. But I thought I had made him mad about the girlfriend, Reverend. Hey, Sonny, I don't think I know see, I just girlfriend. See, I just don't give a shit. No, me I, neither. <laughs> I mean, well, I, now I don't. I, at that time, though, I needed every ounce of support I could get from other comedians because yeah. you know the networking of the comedian industry. It's not. It don't matter how wonderful you are or how good you are. If nobody knows who you are, you're not going to get work. You have to network and you have yeah. to make friends and mm-hmm. you have to be supportive of other comics and i mean i i I always see a lot of these uh a a lot of the 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 new guys who immediately like their first times on stage they go up and they try to be as you know uh, offensive as possible you know look who's talking but (laughs) but i say you know what and and i did this for a little bit just you know play by the rules for a little bit you know go ahead and just try out a few things and just you know find your own little comfort zone and uh because i actually used to do that as well i used to go on and just you know full like three-piece suits and like a, a tie i used to do that uh on stage and then now well you 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 see what i'm you, you see what i'm wearing this is something you usually wear when you're in your late 50s you're retired and you just don't give a shit yeah. i'm 31 i don't give a rat's ass right now and i've, I've gotten very i've relaxed myself 
immensely. Yeah, Tom, <laughs> looked, Tom walked into my house and they looked like he lived at the villages in Florida. You know that, <laughs> you know that retirement community that rages with STDs? You know, the average age is 67 and you have four sexually transmitted diseases on an average basis, depending on the levels of penicillin you're taking at that time. That's what Tom drank. He's got this, like, I'm, I'm not so sure if it's a cross between a country and western shirt and a Hawaiian print that went horribly wrong uh, or what, but he showed up wearing that and a, uh, an old man's Kango hat that he bought on clearance at Coles, he said. <laughs> Which I'm all about the clearance rack. Oh, Don't yeah. get me wrong. My wife has taught me how to shop on the clearance rack now. Oh, yeah. I am a clearance rack maniac, Jack, but I still don't think I would have bought that shirt. But I like I like this shirt because these are actually, you can't see the th- th- this part, but it's the uh, they're, uh, Venus fly traps. Oh, so th- I, figured that, I figure, you know, fly trap, you know, that, that sort of fits my... Comedic personality. So, oh, absolutely! Everything comes full circle with me. It's it's all about your the, backup co-host wants a more comfortable seat. Yeah, I think. It, <laughs> he wants to get closer to you to sniff you. Tom has cats, and uh, that smell is something that is very intriguing to Champ. So, the microphone and the uh, smell of cats has has got him intrigued. And Tom was very impressed that the only real comfortable chair in this studio is the one that Champ gets to set in. <laughs> He's like, really? This is how this works? We sit on old plastic chairs from elementary school, and the dog gets the, the office chair. He, yeah, gets, sure. he gets the seat. He gets the uh, the big Rush Limbaugh uh, excellence in broadcasting leather chair. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's covered in white and brown hair, as you can tell. He's marked it. Uh, well, he hasn't peed on it. He hasn't that kind of That you know it. of. That I know of, but there's a good reason why I don't sit in it anymore either, because I ain't positive that he hasn't peed in it. So, you know, uh, we're not going to take those kind of chances. Uh, we've been abandoned today. In Jen's absence, Ralph was supposed to be here, um, and our buddy Ralph Piscatelli, our sound effects guy, I haven't heard from him. I shot him a text message. He hasn't responded. So, uh, I don't know. I hope Ralph's okay. And I'm thankful for you, because if you wasn't here, I'd be all alone. It'd just be me and Champ, and then the conversations get mildly disturbing. You know, because it drifts off into a place where I play the role of Champ and I both, and... So, lick your balls lately? No, we cut them off a year ago. (laughs) (laughs) He licks where they used to be a lot. Okay, well, you see, there you go. That's the start of a good uh, conversation. In fact, I, I, l- let me go hit the head real quick, and you can, you two can t- no, try out good. that conversation. No, no, we're good. We're good, we're good right now. <laughs> Got to give a shout-out to my little sister. Oh, yeah. Katie, she's listening in Iota, Tennessee. She is a student at East Tennessee State University, and uh, she runs her own little radio show there at her college. Oh, nice. And I was very, I, I was kind of impressed to yeah. hear that she was doing that when Dad let me know. And so, Katie, I hope the show's going well. I've listened in a time or two, and I appreciate you listening in to us as we broadcast live from the Medieval Custom Cycle Studios here at the Walrus Compound. It's a getting you over the hump Wednesday edition Thanksgiving Eve party has begun gun tom myers is hanging out with us we're talking about his comedic career and his life that has led him from being the mayor and coffee guru of falston to owning a mexican restaurant and running for politics and everything in between <laughs> and when we come back there has been a storied and i have a, 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 another thing that i do i also uh I'm employed by Ripken Baseball. I also am the PA announcer for their weekend youth tournaments. What are when you, they're Jamaican? In season. How many jobs are you actually trying to have? <laughs> you remember the old Saturday night, spoof, uh, Saturday night Live spoof about Jamaicans like having 14 jobs? I think you're trying to be that. You got to get you a little better tan, though, dude. If we're going to try to pull you off as Jamaican, I mean, we can get you. We can get have you. you seen, we... Have you seen my complexion? I don't tan. I'm melanoma. You yeah, know how really. most. You know how most. You know how most people go. Uh, they go out in the. They go outside in the sun unprotected without sunscreen. Yeah. That's considered cautiousness. With my skin tone, that's considered attempted suicide. Right. Yeah. Tom's so white, he's damn near translucent. <laughs> You, can't, you almost see through it. We'll talk more to time. We've got a whole lot more fun and entertainment coming your way. This is the Walrus and Jen Show. Less Jen on a Get Yourself Over the Hump Wednesday edition. Good morning, Walrus Nation. The Walrus Radio Network would like to give a big shout out and thank you to Crave Marketing and Social Media Solutions. Crave Marketing can help spread the word about your business, product, or service across the social media outlets available to you today. 
Crave Marketing and Social Media Solutions has helped the Walrus Radio Network grow tremendously over the past year. Allow Crave Marketing and Social Media Solutions help you grow your business. Reach out to my friend Kathy Nosk at www.cravemarketingandsocialmediasolutions.com and let her know that the Thunder Walrus sent you. Good morning, Walrus Nation. It's Thanksgiving Eve, and you're listening to the Get Yourself Over the Hump Wednesday edition of the Walrus Attack Show as we broadcast live from the Medieval Custom Cycle Studios here in the Walrus Compound. Tom Myers hanging out with us, and as we look out the studio window, it looks like the conversion is taking place. That wintry mix is arriving in the Mid-Atlantic region. They were saying earlier this morning on Facebook and social media outlets that it had started in Frederick like two hours ago that the conversion had taken place. The 95 corridor is supposed to be kind of the dividing line between wintry mix and ice and full-fledged snow. Or as we call it in the Mid-Atlantic. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, you don't like the weather. You don't like the weather here. Stick around because it was just seven day, seventy two days ago. It was it was sinister, and I do not like it. I mean, I I'm, I don't mind warm weather. I don't like warm weather in you know October or November because then it feels like someone left the oven on. Yeah, there's something creepy about your driveway sweating. You know, it, it hasn't rained, but it's been so cold that the concrete got cold. Then the ambient air temperature jumped up so high. It's simple science. It was condensation, but it was still creepy to watch your front porch sweat. I always thought it was just the uh, it, it was just the the um, the sinister nature of it because of uh, all the bodies buried under there. Oh, you just thought it was all of the human. Fluids leaking out? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not it. That's not what my front porch is for. Mine's less scientific, yeah. my, my explanation. Yeah, we bury those people in the backyard. <laughs> that way, you know, the neighbors don't see you actually burying them. That's a beautiful garden you have out there, by the way. Yeah, it's well fertilized. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> how long ago did you start your comedic career, Tom? Because there has been, you've, just in the short time I've known you, your career, you've, your comedy has kind of evolved into politics, and I guess where I'm going with this, has your comedy career evolving into a political kind of joke sen- sense evolved into you wanting to be a elected official? Um, well, I, I, I'm at the point in my life now where I still want to uh, be more a comedian than an elected official. I mean, my sort of foray into politics at this moment is helping other candidates run, like being the, you know, sort of the uh, boots on the ground guy, sort of being the spokesperson, you know, yeah, helping, yeah. People get their, helping people get their message out, that kind of thing. You were the feed on the street. Yeah. Now, is that, right now, is that the extent of your interest in politics? Yes. Okay. <laughs> After your little run for the Hartford County Board of Education, you figured that you don't need them digging into your life that deep, huh? Uh, they don't need to dig into my life because everything is uh, Googleable and YouTubeable at this point. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, got, you don't have no skeletons. Everything you've done has been publicized. Uh, and you can clearly see my skeleton because yeah. I, I hardly eat. Right. Yeah. yeah you, I've, I've picked my teeth with bigger things than you do. Um, how long? You're only 31. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I started, um, when I was 17, my first time doing stand-up was I actually, it wasn't, it wasn't open mic or how you're supposed to come up, but I actually auditioned for my high school's senior talent show, or uh, my senior year in high school. This is in, uh, Falston High School in, uh, in 2001. And I believe I was the only person who didn't make the cut. So, <laughs> really, I I didn't want to admit it at the time, but I was shit. Yeah, well, how <laughs> how damaging was that to your ego? You know, this is a talent show, and of course, in that day and time, uh, George Bush had already been president, so no kid left behind. Everybody's supposed to get a trophy. Tom got kicked off the stage. <laughs> well, well, no, this is uh, technically before he became president so clinton was still president oh then. yeah that's right 2001 yeah hell yeah that was uh, 9-11 shit right okay right so so, so th- this is bef- this is before we were i See, i this I, is why i pre-scarred I pre- everybody yeah. 
I so got them well. So please tell me at seventeen you didn't go up there and start telling dick jokes, did you? <laughs> not uh, I could well, not at not at a high school. No, I mean well, I did, I did have some. You, you I did have once. some limitation. You could have done it once, right? Well, and see, then you wouldn't have graduated. <laughs> then I would have had. Then I would have really felt like a rebel about uh, not about not getting accepted. Yeah, you would have had. You would have been that. Right. You know, I I tried. I tried to be you know sort of clean cut you know type of thing, just doing stuff you know. As most newbies do, without punchlines, but just think, here's what I think is funny, and then just like telling a story or somewhere. I don't remember a goddamn thing I did. But, well, of uh, course not. That was 14 years ago. You've drank a lot since then. <laughs> drank a lot and quit since then. Yeah, so, I've yeah. heard that about you. Mm-hmm. Why? Um, as with most things involving alcohol, I can't remember. Uh <laughs> I don't remember why. That's awesome. I don't know why I quit you know, drinking. You know you drink too much when you actually get Christmas cards from the guy who runs the liquor store up the street from you saying, we Merry Christmas, you. and thank you for putting my kid through college. Yes. And I still have student loans. How's this shit working out? Yeah. True story, though. Right about two months after I quit drinking, liquor store up the street from me closes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that tells you you are drinking too much when you stop drinking and the liquor store goes out of business. Way to ruin a man's future and hope of the American dream, Tom. Way to go, dude. I ruin the American dream in so many ways, though. Now, I don't want to. I'm not bringing up a bad subject. I just, it's a simple yes or no question, and that's all we have to delve into it unless you want to. I have heard rumors. About the reality of a very heated social media war between you and Mickey Cuccello. That you guys, but the rumor I heard was, is that because you all have been friends for a very long time, you all have known each other for quite a while, that that was a stage publicity stunt to try to spice up the Baltimore comedy scene around here. Because it's, it's kind of slacked off a little bit. Don't you think the comedy scene has in Baltimore for a while? There was a lot of good rooms around. Oh, there yeah. There was a lot of good places that guys like you and Mickey, Justin, and now what I would like to have it now that I'm at that opportunity, you know, that right. position. I'm not at their level. Let's not say that. But I'm at a position where when I write new material, I'd like to have Well, you've open- traveled and performed and you've I produced your own do. shows. Yeah. I, I mean, still that's- do. The thing of it is, I do it outside of the Baltimore area. You know, I do it at these biker rallies. That's what I go to Daytona and do, and that's what I go to Laconia and do, and they also bring me in as an MC and host. So when I have new material, I'd like to be able to have a place to go, you know, try it out on a live audience, and it doesn't seem like there's the amount of comedy rooms that used to be around, you know? Well, do you mind if I get comfortable? Please. Because this this, this I mean, you're not going to take your pants off, are you? Um, I'm not getting paid for this, so no. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're broke here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just getting a little comfortable because this is gonna this take is gonna a take a while. Yeah, make yourself comfortable right. there and uh, I down used the Thanksgiving to, story for us. Uh, I used to get be able to get on the 98 Rock Morning Show a lot, and that was because at the time when I was first trying to get on, there seemed to be this. You know, I, I guess you'd call it like like a, an upsurge, or just this new energy involved in the uh, in the local comedy scene. Yeah, and I, was, I sort interest of interest was peaking. I sort of latched onto that and just rode this wave. And there's there's certain times where you know if certain people start during certain portions, like when things open up, then they become. They become known, and they, they become sort of at least you know locally famous anyway. But those opportunities close seem to close up real quick, and I came in at one of those opportunities that just seemed to close up real quickly for me. Okay, and it really started off as I was just trying to promote this uh, th- some of these shows that I was doing. So I went in on the studio. I went in on uh, this is during the final months when uh, Mickey was doing his afternoon show. Um, I went in there, promoted the show that I did, and... That's when Mickey and Amelia were in the afternoon, yeah, before they got moved, so that which, was like nine years ago. Yeah, and which I thought, you know, I, I did, I, I thought, you know, very well. I mean, I heard nothing but good things from from them, from the production staff, even from some of the, uh, the higher-ups at, uh, at Hearst, 
which is, you know, also WBAL radios is there, WBAL yeah. TV is there. So that's a pretty, that's a, a pretty big, to quote our vice president, a pretty big fucking deal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tie politics into it again. There you go. Look at you. But, um, so I went, I went on a couple times since then within the span of about six months, I think. And then grumbling started from some of the comedians who you know, weren't – maybe have, some have been doing it maybe a little bit longer than I have, some less, uh, less time than I have. And th- some of that got to Mickey that they were not that happy that I was getting – airtime you were getting more than everybody else and they were whining about it right okay so you probably know you probably know this because you and i were both at that time frequent listeners of uh, that station they decided to you know bring me in under you know uh, under the cover of oh you know we'll, we'll go ahead and give you a chance to redeem yourself which you know redeem myself for what every single time i've gone on there i've gotten great I've I've gotten great reviews. Again, nothing but nothing but positive things, and they they were always nice to me in the studio. Granted, the mornings they were a little bit trickier because you got to be more you, you got to be quicker. You got to be yeah. Which you know I had I had no trouble doing, but you know at the same time you also want to find out how to be how to be edgier without you know going over the line and bringing yeah, fines like- on the radio station. So you want you want edgy yet, yeah, Tom. Just go ahead and be yourself and relax, but don't. Yeah, don't so cross this was, our FCC license. Right, so that that's that's really how I was going in there. I was doing the smart thing, I okay. thought. So I go in there one day, and they they basically decide to go ahead and just, uh, here, here you go, we'll go ahead, you go ahead and do some of your stand-up act, and we'll let the audience decide whether they want to keep you on or not. Now... There is a huge difference between performing in a comedy club at, you know, maybe 8, 8.30, 10 o'clock at night, maybe midnight for, you know, a group of people who are, you know, they're liquored up, they're ready to go, they have a good time. Completely different when you, ha- when you set a comedy club set up punchline style setting for people who are already pissed off because they're sitting in beltway traffic. Yeah. Yeah, there's no energy. Or they're un- or they're unemployed. Yeah. Or they're on probation. You so. know, the, 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 or you know those three. So and I I, sh- I should preface this by saying before they they brought me in, they want to go ahead and say I don't know why we have Tom in here, but we're going to go ahead and and do this and blah 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 like on the Shows before I came in, they wow. would go ahead and say this because I, I I listen. Well, they, of course, they don't think I listen to this stuff. They, they don't think that when uh, they they talk on the air that they that uh, that that people are going to hear this. But Mickey and Amelia uh, and Spiegel has been off the air o- almost a year now, uh, and so this recent uh, social media spat w- was within the past year, wasn't it? Well. So I I go in I go in a few times. I'm, I'm sorry I'm taking so long Don't getting to this, but I'm no, setting up I'm setting up that this is like a, a ten year story. Yeah. It's gonna take that long to tell. Ten but. years. <laughs> All right. Well tomorrow we'll be having dinner downstairs. If you get hungry, you're welcome to come join us. <laughs> well anyway, I'll go uh it no, was, take uh, your time. Tell the yeah, story yeah, yeah, the way yeah. you want. We got plenty of time. I own the I own the station. They're not gonna shut us down. <laughs> we'll change that. <laughs> So I ain't finished the story yet. They go ahead and they bring me in three, uh, three times, three additional. I've, I've been in the studio three times where they like me. I got on well with the with the studio staff, and the audience, everybody who worked there. Blah 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 blah. Things were going well. Yeah, and the, the three times after that was when they brought in you do your stand up act and we'll decide whether they like you or not. And you know, surprise, surprise. The day before they talk me down or pump me up by talking me down, I guess I should say, before bringing me in. Okay. Surprise, surprise, the audience doesn't like me. By a very narrow, by a very narrow margin, all three times, by the way. So what did they do? Run a, a text vote, a, a, a texting campaign? Or how did they do it? 
It, well, it was a um, well. This was before texting, so everything was done. This is back when you could call into the studio. Ah, gotcha. So gotcha. it was all it was all phone calls, and um, so that was the that was how the uh, sort of animosity started. Okay. Then I'd say about about four years ago, uh, Magoobies does this thing where they want to have the longest. Continuous running comedy show with multiple comedians. I remember that. They tried to set a world's record mm-hmm. for a comedy show in like 30-some hours or something, right? Well, the original one was supposed to be 40 hours because the comic strip in New York did 30-some hours. So right. we, they wanted to shoot for 40. Yep. Then the month before the, the show was supposed to go oh, off. I know. See, even the dogs are heckling me now. (laughs) They're not heckling me. I guarantee you it's Ralph finally making his way here. I'm awake. Hey, Ralph. Hey. How you doing, man? Doing all right, man. I'm just just getting a little little comfortable here. Ignore my shoes. I'll put them down. That's fine. How, you doing all right? Yeah, I just overslept like, oh, a, that's, like a jerk. That's good. As long See, as I almost overslept. did that myself. So I, 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 feel, I, I don't you feel bad have, now. You've been having car issues. I was more worried that you was having car problems than over, oversleep is no, not a big deal. I overslept. No worries. It's Wednesday. You're allowed to. So the f- comedy, we're talking about uh, a comedy record-setting event that he participated in, McGooby's Joke House. Uh, but anyway, the month, bef- but the month before we were supposed to do this, the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles set a record for 80 hours. Oh, dear so Lord. That, wow. So we had to go for 81 hours, and it was set for, I think, Monday at 2 p.m. That's when it would start, to Thursday at 11 p.m. of this one particular week. Okay. I get, you know, I happen to get, dr- and of course, because you're doing comedy for 24 hours, 24 straight hours for like three or four days or whatever. Now, not by yourself. There's a team no. of comedians. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 people are out there going, this is such bullshit. He is a lot. No, there was a full team. Multiple com- comedians. Multiple comedians. Some people have to go on. I mean, someone has to go on at, you know, pretty much varying times. And yeah. I happen to get a Wednesday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. Like, that was the time I happened to get, yeah. I happened to get drawn, which, you know. I, I wanted to do something to help break a record, so I go ahead and go up, and, you know, for four in the morning, there's like about a dozen people scattered throughout Magoobies, which is like a theater, so when you have like two people up here, one person there. And they're I mean, all camped out like, you know, zombies, they probably... Are. They all want to go to sleep, <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> so I go up, and I did what I thought was, you know, reasonably well, got some... Got some laughs. I mean, obviously, you're not going to get like CD recording style laughter. <laughs> not with 12 people at 4 a.m. <laughs> right. Not going to happen. Mickey gets up after me, and this is all on. This is all on video. This has been YouTubed. Okay. And just absolutely starts blasting the performance that I did. I've seen that video. And I'm thinking to my, I know, I lived that video. I know you did. <laughs> I was in the fucking audience. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> And so I was, I'm just thinking to myself, really? You're going to go ahead and judge me based on, like I said, 4 o'clock in the morning, two people there, one person there, blah, 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 blah. So that goes viral, and that just feeds into everyone's fodder a little bit more. So now I'm getting to within the last year. This past Wednesday, um, Mike Turpin and I think Fez Grimes, the the Color Me Funny guys. Yeah, formerly they, Color Me Funny boys. They held a uh, a roast for yours truly at the at the Oyster House because you know I'm lifelong Harford County resident, so the Oyster House is a quick drive for me. Yep. All my friends, even some of my a couple of uh, political candidates who I was supporting, came out to go ahead and watch me basically get vivisected on stage, which right. I knew was going to happen. Uh, I I enjoyed. Um, it was it was a good time. Everybody did well. A lot of my a lot of my friends were there. A lot of people who you know I, I worked with, who I didn't necessarily know, got up and and performed as well. But guys like you know, Ron Bender, he went up, uh, roasted me. Uh, Ken Water, all right, uh, on. Irwin, he also got up there as well. So it was really just uh, Mike Stork also, which surprised me because you know how busy he is. I mean, if he's coming yeah. out for that, he he's wants always to, in Canada. 
What? <laughs> oh, that, uh, Mike Storch, the biggest comedian in com- in Canada. You the go funniest, to- the funniest Baltimore comedian in Canada. I think I once said at yeah, the at the, yeah, ro- yeah. the roast. Uh, you go to Baltimore and ask people who Mike Storch are. Nobody unless you're in certain is. places, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Canada, they've got a monument built to him up there. So you know, Mickey goes up, does a does a few jokes about me. He does okay, as I would you know expect him to go ahead and. Sure. Focus heavily on me. You know, some on the as it was a roast for me. Um, actually, he actually gets booed a couple times because some <laughs> some of the jo- <laughs> I think he made a reference to like AIDS or something, something along the lines of like you know, big difference between your comedy and and AIDS is that AIDS can be fixed or something like that. Right. <laughs> the audience actually booed at that. Nice. <laughs> so I I got up afterwards. There were a few more went up, and then I got up afterwards. I went ahead and focused on Mickey towards the end because you know he was the, he's the biggest name in the room. So I wanted to save you know the really big the, the, the that was sort of like the, the fireworks show the grand finale the coup de going out going after Mickey Coachella in a room like that is the grand That's finale the place that, that and that yeah and that took off like a rocket. I mean that was I actually had people you know come up to me afterwards who don't like Mickey who say, great job going after him, but you kind of went a little over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so about a month after that. And knowing the way, because I have worked with Mickey in the past, knowing the way Mickey has the ability to dice people up, for them to come out and tell you that you went too far, <laughs> I, I can only imagine how it was so fine you chopped him up. It was, I tell you, I must have done that because I actually felt the need to go up to him. I think I ran into him the very next day and said, listen, I didn't go after you, you know, too hard because I know I kind of hit some sore spots, blah, blah, blah. And he said to me, no, don't worry. You did what you were supposed to do, and it was fun. So I thought, okay, I just took that at face value, and I thought that was the end of it. So about a month ago, or a couple months ago, someone sends me a video clip. Well, or an audio clip, actually, because this is from Mickey's uh, podcast, where he goes, he's with another comedian, and he's talking about the roast, and he actually brings up, references some of the jokes that I did. Well, he referenced it. He said that I made fun of his mother dying, which I didn't. Right. I did some other, I did, sort of skirted around that, but I never actually went to her dying Mm -hmm. and he talked about how and he and the and of course you're in a studio with mickey you kind of just instantly want to agree with everything he says because that makes the that makes the show go at least i mean his shows go yeah you're gonna please him right Right. and and so and so the, the, the other comic who wasn't even at the roast who you know had the option who had the option to go but you know didn't want to chose not to basically said oh yeah well after hearing Mickey, not even, probably doesn't even remember some of the jokes that I said. Doesn't even quote them. So he presumably can't even remember what they are. So this other comedian doesn't know what they are. This other comedian goes out and says, Oh, yeah, well, Tom, the, Tom said some really offensive things to you. you know, whatever, they, whatever they were, he said them. And they basically just went back and forth and back and forth. And so I listened to that, and I just thought to myself, God damn it. So I, I went ahead and just wrote that little tirade i mean it took a while it took a while to write i looked at it and i sat on it for a little bit i you know went ahead and posted that to my facebook page i just put it out there and then i also put it on my uh, on my twitter feed at tom underscore myers little plug there of course <laughs> and that actually you know twitter limits you to 140 characters i actually split that up in between uh six tweets so there's just oh, wow. six of them in a row <laughs> where I'm just <laughs> riffing, riff. Okay, I'm at. Uh, okay, I reached my 104. Level. Okay, enter. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, 104. Enter. So just six times of that, and then so that's. I don't necessarily see it as a feud because it's never gone I, anywhere since then. I, w- I was just curious. If I it fe- was... no, no, no. Listen, I, I've feuded. There's a, a couple of other you know locals. That I with whom I've <laughs> really been in heavy, you, <laughs> yeah. So and that's the, the, this stuff between my Mickey curiosity and me is only revolved around the rumor that it was done for publicity purposes only. Um, I didn't know if it was really a 
issue between you two? It was, was just a publicity stunt, or I didn't think two, it, comedi- two comedians hacking on I didn't each other. Thi- I didn't think it was an issue. Mickey told me it was not an issue, but would, apparently it was. Well, I didn't know until I read that. You know, six. Tweet riff of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Tom has snapped. I mean, this some bitches went postal on something. But but I, I tell you what, you know what? Honestly, I would rather be on the Walrus Nation with you, just chatting and riffing, rather than being on a station like Ninety Eight Rock and just having to please some. Whatever, some some corporate entity, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. we ain't got none of them because we ain't making no damn money. I mean, I, I just imagine like I could just be at, riffing about how, you know, I, I could just do something about how like you know, you know, corporations are basically taking over this country and turning a holiday like Thanksgiving, which, you know, call me crazy. I think it's supposed to be a family holiday. Right. Into they, they're basically turning it into uh, a way to make money. In fact, the only reason. The only good thing about Black Friday is that if you have really annoying relatives who love shopping, that gets them out of the house. <laughs> and if you really think they're annoying, a good thing is is that they may actually get trampled to death because they <laughs> want to. There is a possibility <laughs> they could die today. But imagine doing that on ninety eight. Imagine doing that on ninety eight Rock, and then saying. All right, we're going to cut to a commercial break for our Black Friday special <laughs> yeah. Bob Bell Chevy. Yep. Da, 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 da. Come save 25% on your next Chevrolet. Don't worry about being trampled to death at Walmart. Buy your next Chevrolet. But the, the big thing that, that really sort of uh, soured me was years ago, the, uh, produce, the, the then producer of the show, who's now one of the co-hosts, um, w- wanted, to go, wanted to bring a, a female comedian, a very funny uh, female comedian, but, and I actually saw this, e- she actually showed me this email. They said, we'll let you come in, provided you show us your tits. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, that. <laughs> well, that, that sounds is, like them. That sounds like them. Which, I mean, if you, if you want to go ahead and play to a certain element, like, that's, that's fine. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult enough for, you know, for women to get into comedy. Why, yeah. sure, you don't need to put that yeah. kind of um, stipulation on their appearance on the show. Right. And if, nobody, and nobody if, ever if asks me to my tits. If anything, <laughs> sti- if any- no, 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 listen. If anything, stipulations should go on uh, male comedians. Look, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't around during the whole, you know, women's suffrage thing and, and whatever, but... You know what? Listen, I apologize that uh, I'm. I'm sorry. My my gender is are, are such assholes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we're chauvinistic pigs. I'm I'm willing to let women get all the advantages. To be quite honest with you, I believe God's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Mother Nature for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm a firm believer God's a woman, and and it's well depicted. Uh, in my comedy, and as well as just look at life. <laughs> I think life shows it. Look at Jen. Yeah, look at Jen. <laughs> uh, but what life does bring us sometimes is disturbing. And the fact that education is so key, and the fact that you ran for Hartford County Board of Education, yeah, leads me to uh, I tie everything back to education because knowledge, even in the Christian world. The Bible itself says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right. I understand the anger at which the Ferguson community is, they have risen to this level of anger because maybe other things indicated that there was a corrupt police department there. I don't know. But the evidence in this particular situation Shows an out of control man. He's yes. eighteen. Please stop referring to this man as a, boy. as a child or a boy. He was a male child of someone who was eighteen years of age, which by legal definition and he wasn't little describes either. him as an adult. And at six foot four, two hundred and ninety to three hundred pounds, exactly. there's various he was much bigger anyway. And when a police officer is in his patrol car and you reach in, that isn't a threat. That is an attack of his person. And he has the right to defend himself. And if this kid was already, whatever he was enraged about, was he possibly under the influence of some substance, whether it be alcohol or another drug? I don't know. But I know the video I saw 
of him manhandling that store owner. Right. And that is assault, armed ro- or it's robbery, robbery with yeah. assault. Then, then it's you're, not then armed you, robbery. He didn't have a no, weapon, but, but he, it, it was robbery with, with assault. assault. He's already assaulted another individual. This cop is on another call. What I'm saying is, is that you may have the right to be outraged over certain things, but not this. No. We have to accept the reality that this kid was misguided or unguided and left uncontrolled for a period of time to where he became a nuisance to society. His arrest record proves this. I'm not making judgment of Michael Brown Jr.'s character. I am making factual statements about evidence that has been proven. The right. boy, the man, he was arrested as a boy. His juvenile record was extensive. I don't know if he was actually arrested as an adult yet, and since he had turned 18 or not. I do know that there are documented scuffs with the law and a juvenile record that occurred before he was 18. This young man had a childhood of unguided, misdirected influences in his life, and it led well, so to... did I. Right. But, you know... <laughs> yeah, but you, you didn't go after any cops, though. <laughs> you weren't trying to rob, cigar- steal cigarellos, and assault... You know, you were the clerk in this situation. That man owned that store, but you were a 7-Eleven clerk. How, well, would, you, what, how what, would you have responded if a six foot four? 300-pound black man come in there, grabbed you up by your shirt, started shaking you around, and stole a pack of cigarellos? Well, I'm five foot eleven, only 135 pounds, so I probably wouldn't have been able to do a damn thing in that situation. And that's with a roll of quarters in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he weighs 135 pounds. With I think though, I, I think though that, that a lot of a lot of these issues they didn't just start when Michael Brown was killed. Yeah, that, that's just that, that's, that's an underlying. Yeah. Like that, that's something that's been going. It, it didn't start with the Michael Brown killing. It didn't even start with the the Larry King, not Larry King, Rodney, <laughs> Rodney King. King. <laughs> Somebody should have killed Larry King a long time ago. <laughs> Look at him; he looks like a crypt keeper. <laughs> Yeah, this is all wait a sunk minute. in and How is he in. getting all these women too? Here we go back there. And what, <laughs> back, back to the women talk. <laughs> Those pointy shoulder bones. It looks like bat wings when he's sitting there. And his shoulders are pointed up. Have they you are. ever seen a bat when it's folded up? That's As someone who has bat wing shoulders, I find that statement very offensive. You, know, you, you, know, you look way healthier and way more alive than Larry King. Oh, thank you. Larry King looked like he died five years ago. Somebody forgot to tell him. Abingdon, Mar- Abingdon Maryland. Hello. <laughs> Who's this fat bastard to Thunder Walrus? Why is he picking on my old ass? <laughs> he's just jealous because I'm sleeping with 26-year-olds. And the um... But the fact is, he's literally sleeping with 20 20- He's not having <laughs> sex with him. His old ass is just laying down next to him. <laughs> he literally just sleeps with 26-year-olds. That's going to be... Hugh Hefner. That's going to be uh, Joe Robinson in about 70 years. You think but... so? <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, well, like I, like I was saying, I mean, it, a, a lot of this tension didn't. I mean, it's been going the the, the, the tension between the various races. It's been going on for four or five hundred years yeah, since exactly. that old slavery thing start. Slavery thing started. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But at some point in time, aren't we going to get past this? Why can't we educate ourselves as a society to understand that America truly is a melting pot of vast ancestries, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Ralph, you're of Italian descent. Your family came over here on a boat at some point in time. Part of my family was here before anybody. We're Native American. But my dad didn't get here. Him, him and his mother didn't get here until 1947. My dad wasn't even born in this country. I am So when oh. you realize that we are a true melting pot, there are many cultures here that we need to accept right. and recognize. But your culture will only be accepted and recognized as long as it is not violent or derogatory to any you're not your culture isn't better than mine it's just different my culture isn't better than and, yours and we it's, weren't right. violent at all i mean oh sure no we, we came over here the sure. godfather was all fiction I, yeah, we're I, not talking about just italians <laughs> we're talking about the pilgrims in general you know we came over here and made friends with the indians and taught them how to make their corn into popcorn and <laughs> 
you know. I thought we taught them how to make it into smallpox. And how to die. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we taught them how to drink. <laughs> taught them how to bleed. Where does that resentment come from exactly? Yeah. Taught them how to not trust white people. <laughs> Think about this. Five hundred, and then five hundred years later, Ferguson, because you know we brought smallpox. <laughs> you know why black people are the only, you know, people that are preaching the race card. It's all about white. Uh, it's all about white people and white supremacy. Because they've killed everybody else. There's no American Indians That's left. Right. Look what they freaking did to them. <laughs> yeah, we, we took that then. Out. Then, when we killed all the Indians, instead of making them slaves, we'd go all the way back across the pond to another continent and corrupt, and bring a, them. And corrupt a total different <coughs> society of people by convincing them that, hey, you need to sell us your excess kids. What? Yeah, all the healthy young men that you don't need or want, we'll give you thousands or hundreds of dollars, whatever, for them. Take them and give them a good life. Teach them a skill. Uh-huh. Sure. Where have you given any other society in history a reason to trust you? You showed up to the American Indians, shook their hands, and then shot them in the back. You went and grabbed African um, Africans and brought them over here because you was too damn lazy to pick your own cotton. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Hitler was a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean... Well, he was, he was an artist. Those artists are always misunderstood. Yeah, if, he'd just been ex- if he'd just been accepted into art school... Yeah. It would have been fine. Right. <laughs> Auschwitz would have looked a lot nicer. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> Trying to take some of the heat off of you. <laughs> this would have been a lot different if Hitler would have just been accepted into art school. My life would have been different if I'd have been accepted into art school. You know, it's a beautiful building over there. Yeah, the problem is I'm just not an artist. I don't know why. I wasn't yeah, you are. Right yeah, you are. What, what do you What do you call this? Shit that keeps me out of jail. <laughs> Listen, Stuff that keeps me out of bars and. Doing, you know, it, yeah. gives, it gives me something to do. One man's community service is another man's Picasso. All right, that's uh, you know, absolutely. But when you educate people and yeah. you make them realize that, look, it's all about self empowerment. The and if you want change, you are the one responsible for it. You can change your life. You have been given that authority. By the great creator of this universe, whatever you want to refer to him as, because I, I could care, I hate religion. I believe in a deity that is greater than I that created this universe and is in, in control of it all in, what, in some shape, form, or fashion. Religion and the fact that people are willing to kill each other over what they can't believe, I mean, what they can't even prove. It's truly what you believe. And you're willing to kill somebody over how you. Live your life. The Crusades. If, that was pretty. That was pretty much. Yeah, it pretty, and it's still going on. Yeah. The no. thing of it is, is we can't get past it. No. What do you think the Muslims are doing? It's a. It's a crusade. It's a. Uh, they're trying to abolish the other religions because they think theirs is the only true religion. Well, e- even even in this country, it doesn't spell out anywhere that we're a that we're a Christian nation. In fact, the First Amendment says the federal government can't. Although it can't prohibit you from practicing a religion, it can't officially recognize a religion. It cannot. Right. It just can. It, we are one nation under God. God does not indicate religion. No. God is a word used, and you can call him. Oh, you can call him Allah if you, you want. want. And that line wasn't added into the Pledge of Allegiance until like the 1950s. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're right. And you're right. In God We Trust wasn't always written. <laughs> On our currency. <laughs> well, no, because we always didn't have paper money. It used to be gold and silver. I mean, it right. was actually right. when they took us off the gold standard. It, 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 that, that's only a fairly, I mean, in terms of in, in terms of the country, it's only a fairly recent phenomenon. And you're and and uh, <laughs> Spike here is taking issue with that. I think he's yeah. just sort of had this little growling thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's got a breathing issue. Oh. He really has a birth. Uh, What's well, not a birth defect? He was. Uh, He's horny. He just likes oh. you. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we. Thanks for making fun of my dog's health problem, you asshole. <laughs> we we moonlight as uh, phone sex operators, and, <laughs> and you can call and listen to Champ breathe heavy for four ninety nine a month at your leisure. 
That's how you pay. That's a champ. Yeah. Do that. How do you think Tim pays for this equipment? Absolutely. We ain't making no money on advertising. We're pimping, we're pimping, pimping champ, champ out. Champ. Pimping champ out as a sex phone operator so he can breathe heavy. He sounds more like Darth Vader. Race relate. <laughs> Race relations and dogs being offered for phone sex. What better way for three white guys to That's spend, a, a, Wednesday. spend a Wednesday before Thanksgiving? That's Only that. in America. <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy, and I think he was a nationally syndicated voice, but locally we heard him here on WPOC, a country station here in Baltimore. Do you remember Earl Pitt's American? Uh, I've... I've don't listen to country music stations, okay. but I know the name. Okay, Earl Pitts American was a syndicated commentator whose bit would air in the afternoons here in the Baltimore metropolitan area once upon a time on WPOC, right. and it was set up like a call-in. And, and, and he would do a commentary on what was going on in America. And one of the most colorful openings he had was referring to airlines. When they started really raising the fees and checking – Charging you to check luggage and this stuff. Earl Pitt's opening comment was, Hi, this is Earl Pitt's American. You know what pisses me off? You know what makes me so mad I want to use a live alligator as carry-on luggage? <laughs> and I'm, I'm envisioning this redneck, you know, just walking on with a baby alligator in a pet harness, you know, like you put it, just carrying it. Here, you want to check this bag? <laughs> nah, you can carry that one on. Go ahead. Nice alligator <laughs> handbag, sir. <laughs> but, you know, it makes me so mad I don't use a live alligator as carry-on luggage. And then he just went into his rant about griping. I always wondered what happened to Earl Pitts American. I think I need to research him. We will bring him back. Maybe that'll be my show's claim to fame is that, you know, we go dig up an old ancestor like Earl Pitts American. <laughs> yeah. bring him back. But, the, but the way today's society is in, he had a colorful commentary that now is not necessarily a joke. We have digressed that far, and that is what leads me to have some fear that the movie Idiocracy will be the only comedy that actually becomes a documentary. Right. Of how the, I don't want to say the evolution of huma humanity, but the digression of humanity. We're just going to drink. The de-evolution. Yes, the de-evolution, the dumbing down of the world. People are starting to hunch back over to uh, ape-like uh, shapes. I can, I can how, see that. Do you realize how hairy my knuckles have gotten in the past five years? Yeah, but that's from something else. No, it's not my palms, <laughs> it's my knuckles. It's starting. I can see it yeah. right now. That's scientific evidence. Scientific evidence that we are evolving back <laughs> you're, 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 you're turning back into Neanderthal man, brother. Sure. I wasn't that far from Neanderthal man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't evolved that much. I think uh, it has a lot to do with, you know, we're being told how to think as well. Like I had brought this up earlier, kind of as a little bit of a joke, where we're, it's sort of the corporatization of this country where we're essentially, you know, we you know, say, oh, well, it's, you know, if we just, you know, change politicians every now and then, things. No, it's not going to help if we change, you know, it's not going to help if we change politicians. I mean, Maryland's not suddenly going to get, Maryland didn't suddenly, you know, get better because, you know, no. Ehrlich was out and O'Malley came in. It's not going to get better suddenly because O'Malley's out and, you know, Hogan's coming in. I mean, it's... It, it, Basically, the, the people who really run these things are banks, multinational corporations. They have they have all the power. They've pretty much you know convinced us to go ahead and give them that power by basically sacrificing all of our uh, uh, financial savings to them because you know because of these products that we don't need or you know. Um, mortgages that you know we're never going to pay off until we're just about uh, uh, until we're just about clinically dead. So and and that's how that's how they get their power. That's how they get their uh, that, that, that's how they get their might. And it's, until until that stops, you know that's never that's not going to change. Right. And, and I, my sense of it is is that it is just a form of slavery. Mm -hmm. Realize this that the capitalistic. It's corporate welfare is essentially what it is. Well, but the capitalistic mentality of this country revolves on one basic principle, debt. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to be in debt. And they enslave you for 30 years. Because then they know they've got a tax-generating individual. Because we all going to work till our mid-60s or 70s now, at least. Yeah. If you start working when you were 16 and you work until you were 67, you've worked 50 years of your life. And they've got 50 years of tax generation off of your back. That's it. And the reason you have to keep working is because you're enslaved to a 30-year mortgage, a seven-year car payment, which you got to have a new car every five years so you don't ever get out of debt from that. And unless you're independently wealthy, which only 3% of this country actually is, mm-hmm. and now 1% is like extraordinarily wealthy, but the, 3% of this country classifies into what into the... Uh, wealthy category, independently wealthy. Now, with that being said, those are the folks that are going to pay in cash for things. And and um, you know, I'm I'm not against you know the the idea of capitalism. I mean, I'm into more like you know free market capitalism, where everybody has an equal footing to go ahead and try and you know do their best. You know, whatever business ventures they want to do, whether it's you know your comedy and your podcast. You know, my my stand up and whatever I'm doing and, and Ralph's you know whatever he does I just met him. But <laughs> but not uh, much. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, Ralph's got one of those government jobs. He don't do much anything. But you know like for for instance <laughs> twice he you, you you buy this you buy the CD I only enslave you for 30 minutes. I mean that is you know uh, yeah. a good <laughs> a good deal in and of itself. So it's you know I'm uh I I guess what one of trying to say is is that you know, or what what's that expression you know this system is the worst system that we have except for all the others or what's that i think i this is the, what'd you say this is the worst system except for all the others yeah something like that it's the worst system out there except for it's the worst form of society we have except for all, all the, the others. others yeah yeah you never heard that before no that's that, new. that's really no, oh. it's the worst. Ralph, you've heard that, right? It's the worst the... form of yeah. something. Yeah, never heard that. Really? Although I, I can buy into it, I understand the concept of what you're saying. And yeah, I'm sorry, I'm drifting off. I'm still thinking about your your dog operating a phone sex line. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes money at it. <laughs> Champ makes more money than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bad part. The only reason he needs me is because he don't have thumbs. He can't hold the phone. <laughs> Well, I, I think then it would help. Then it would help us evolving back into uh, four legged. Why we got speakerphone? Can't just hit the button. That would that would help us evolving into uh, into four legged creatures. That way we don't have to work anymore. I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to be on all fours. Just at least bad things, bad memories. <laughs> Speaking of mortgages. Yeah, yeah, Good lord. This is the Get Yourself Over the Hump Wednesday edition of the Walrus Attack Show here on the Walrus Radio Network. Uh, Oh, God. (laughs) You lost it. (laughs) What did you just do? So my dad and sister were listening, and I had to send. I hadn't heard anything from them, so I had to send a test. Chad, I said, I haven't scared you yet. I haven't scared you off yet, have I, sis? Dad died back. You did that a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, probably. Sounds like sounds like my dad. You know what? I I will say this, as yeah, you know, as out there and as you know, envelope pushing as some of my comedy is, I will say this much for my parents: they have stopped asking me why I can't be more like Bill Cosby. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> At least they ask you to be more like Mel Gibson. <laughs> Go off on some Jew hating rant. He made that nice movie about Jesus. Why can't you? Do it? <laughs> what the hell happens there? I mean, he makes this nice movie about Jesus, and then he just goes off on this rant where he hates Jews and everybody else. I mean, I think he wanted to play the role of Pontius Pilate, and he couldn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe, maybe he now maybe he made that movie about Jesus. And his goal and mission in life is to get revenge on all of the Jews for Jesus. I mean, they were the ones yeah. that crucified him. That's what would have happened if Hitler had been accepted into art school. <laughs> he would have made a silent film. Yeah. Well, then. <laughs> Fiona Productions <laughs> presents, in conjunction with 
Third Reich Entertainment. My German accent sounds like uh, as a little Martian who used to chase around Bugs Bunny. Yeah, what the hell is that? You look like the guy, like the guy that wears the helmet. What was his name? Not Kazoo. The, no, the Martian. Um, yeah, the little mini evil Martian yeah, the with the big eyes. Yeah. Marvin. Marvin. Yeah, Marvin. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's the voice I was doing. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually part German, so I should be able to do that voice better. I'm part German too, but it doesn't come out. You know what? No, I my my all it comes out is redneck. <laughs> and, you know, there's oh, you're, you're German. Have you have you visited Germany? Like, why do they always act like I, they do, always do, do that. people? It's like you know all the time. Listen, my ancestors left there hundreds of years ago for reasons. <laughs> yeah, and I never went back to find out why. <laughs> Fuck if off. I, if my family left there, I don't want to go back to find out why we had to leave. <laughs> my grand my grandfather wanted to leave New Jersey. I always get scared shitless whenever I'm on the turnpike. <laughs> I'm not going to Germany. I'm sorry. One of the one of the most interesting individuals I ever know was knew was a man named J. E. Marshall. James, uh, I forget what his middle name was, J.E. was what he went by. James and, Earl Marshall. Yeah, James <laughs> Earl Marshall. Had deep, no, that wasn't him. But J.E. had a very plain and simplistic view of life, but it was very accurate. Very accurate. And, uh, you know, we've all heard of Ancestry.com. Yeah. And not that I'm trying to get any uh, advertising from them, but hey, Ancestry.com. Why don't you throw a little money this way? <laughs> You're yeah. an internet-based business. You should advertise on internet-based radio stations. Just saying. Anyway, well, uh, I started talking to him about, you know, I think I'd like to find out more about who I am, where I come from, because my grandparents, you know, I don't know them that much, didn't know them that well, and my one, the Indian grandfather, uh, never wanted to talk about being Indian. He, nope, we ain't not talking about it. Nope, nope. Come on. No. You're white. Accept it. Well, I'm kind of a mutt. You know, I'm German, uh, Indian, and Polish. I, I'm trying to figure out who the hell I am. That's a that's a hot that's like three cu- That's like three cultures or a couple cultures trying to gang up and kill one of them. That's basically <laughs> what it was. I am genetically programmed to be nothing more than a drunken, hot-headed idiot. <laughs> Indians. The dog agreed with you. Just Indians shouldn't drink. Right. Germans invented drinking. Yes. And we don't need to discuss Polacks, Gross. do we? <laughs> I mean, we all understand. I, I, I'm a proven drunken, hot-headed idiot, and I have the arrest record to prove it. <laughs> um, it it's, it's not a good plan. You know, right. and so when I was talking about it, I said ancestry dot com. If I, J E, I called him Papal. He was actually the biological grandfather of one of my ex wives, but I still liked the man very much, and he still liked me very much, and he was very influential in my influential in my uh, young adult life. With that being said, he sat me down. And he said, "Boy, he said, what good is it are you going to do to go back and find out about anybody in your past in your ancestry if they were worth a damn?" They'd have been in the history books. You don't know anything good about anybody from your past, and all you're going to find out is what kind of whores, thieves, and no good for nothings you come from. So be the best human you can be and forget about all them no good for nothings you came from because we ain't none of us come from anything good. I tell you, I, I thought that was the most intellectual statement by a man that never made it out of the sixth grade ever. I'll tell you why it helped me. In the course of searching my ancestry, I found out I am British. Irish, Scottish, German, French, Swiss, Hungarian, maybe Romanian, and a little northern Italian. Like, That's why I have so much shit going on, because I have all these cultures. They each want me to do their own fucking thing. And part of you wants to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't before I came in here. Now I <laughs> Only after 90 minutes on this show did I consider ending my own life, asshole. <laughs> The German part of me wants to keep invading the Polish part of me and just kicking my own ass. And then, at the end of it all, bring the Indian part of you a nice warm blanket. No, the Indian part of me just saying, keep and that some shit on that side. And I don't give a damn what you do to each other. Give me don't, some fire water. Don't bring that mess over here. Just stay over and kill each other. We're gonna hang out right here. What time are we? Oh man, we're going. We're doing well. Eleven twenty-seven on this, the Thanksgiving Eve. 
Where the powdery white stuff is no, coming down. Not the cocaine that it's I was It's Armageddon! <laughs> Armageddon! Everybody get off the road! Toilet paper milk! Oh, my Champ God! Looking, Champ is looking at you like you have both lost your damn minds. Hey, Ralph, we have. And he's looking at Ralph like, you used to be saying to this goofy bastard showed up. What is this? Tom's sitting in Ralph's seat. Champ's confused. Rocky don't know what the hell to do. He's stuck on the chair. He's scratching his ass on Champ's chair. That's pretty much the typical audience reaction of whenever I perform. <laughs> what? Just... I don't know what the fuck is going on. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part about performance. Just oh my god! Yeah. Going to know what's happening next. There's a lot of things I hate about it, but you know the the things that the couple things that I do like about it uh, sort of eclipse everything. And those two things are performing and getting the hell out of the venue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> running out before they start throwing the glass bottles at you because you and insulted somebody's mom. And collecting the check. Yeah. So yeah, that's, you that's, collect that's the check before there. you go on stage in case you're not <laughs> let me give you over. Let me send you my PayPal account. <laughs> yeah. Deposit that shit directly in there. Right. Yeah, just send the, yeah, send the payment to this PayPal account, and I'll talk to y'all next week. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that hey, they believe me at one venue I was at. I uh, got up on stage, and this was after I had dumped the eyeglasses and the sports coat and the sweater and all that crap, right? Back to being me, the, the real me, the whiskey-drinking, yeah. weed-smoking, you know, women-loving party animal. So we're up the kind of boy mom raised you to be. Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. That good Christian upbringing. I had. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, uh, it's a headline and set that I'm doing. I'm like 55 minutes in, and my wife is always very good to give me that sense of, hey, you're on the edge, wrap this up. You know, because you, you know, you've done it. You, 45, 55 minutes, unless you are in that zone, that's about the only longer. And even when you're in the zone, an hour and 15 minutes and you're pushing their attention span. Yeah, that's like, I, I think, you know, guys like Lewis Black, they can only, they can go like, you know, an hour and a half to yeah, those, two hours. Yeah, but I'm, but yeah, even exactly. then, even then, you can feel people in the audience start to, it's like, Okay, you know. I'm about, about had about enough of this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to get up and do something else. I'm right. Sit, you can only sit still so long, you know, like movies. That's why they're two that, hours. Yep. Bam. But you're not all the, a single person doing stand-up comedy doesn't have all of the intriguing caveats going on in a movie. That's why right. you can sit in a movie for two and a half hours. And during, and during a movie, you can finger your date and not get picked on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, didn't you? Say, never mind. <laughs> so, didn't you say you went to the movies with your cousins a lot? <laughs> you from West Virginia? <laughs> not uh, that far west. Not that far west. <laughs> Western Maryland, not West Virginia. Close enough. But as I was closing up my set, you know, the wife gave me that indication of, hey, I can feel the scent here, wrap it up, and I was like, all right, y'all. They're giving me the light back there, which means my probation officer's tired of sitting out in the damn car, so I got to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> That's but a I great was, closer. I love I was, it. And the, they kind of giggled. There is truth. In- <laughs> yeah. They kind of giggled, and as I went off the stage, about 15 people of the audience came over towards me as I was headed towards the door, and I truly was only going to go get some fresh air because it's hot under them lights. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, will your probation officer wait long enough for you to give us an autograph? You got no damn probation officer. Let me catch some air. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me catch my breath, man, and I'll, uh, I'll be back in to sign whatever you want me to sign. But, hey, man, your probation officer wait long enough for you to sign a couple of autographs? I was just kidding, man. These really are truly just jokes. Tom, you've got a couple social media outlets, and I want people to be able to catch your latest C- uh, CD. Where can people find you? How can they keep up with everything Tom Myers? Well, I have so much. Why are I- you pulling your <laughs> pants down? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting something out of my pocket. Oh, he was in his pocket. Yeah. This man shows up here in that shirt wearing athletic <laughs> pants. <laughs> Like he was coming to eat dinner. Is this your attire for tomorrow so that you got stretchy pants so that when you overeat, yeah. you don't have to unbelt, unbutton your pants? You really do look like a 50 year old man. He's 31. I'm the only person who actually uh, is able to get away with wearing extra small stretch pants after he eats and well, still feel comfortable. Well, yeah, because you're only 130 pounds. Jeez. Tomorrow after he eats, he'll be 145 pounds. But uh, Tom is truly only 31. 
Get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm the old man here. I didn't, I didn't realize you were that much younger than me. I, I guess that's a, a compliment. That is a compliment. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a compliment. I mean, you don't look old. You just no. seem much more mature than a 31-year-old. You know, I yeah. know some 30. I think the term you're looking for is jaded. That's the correct <laughs> term you're looking for. Well, you know. <laughs> You can call it what you want. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> My wife has taught me how to try to put a positive spin on anything. <laughs> you know, the fact that you look like a 57-year-old Ethiopian who hasn't had red meat in about eight months. You know, I was trying to say you look more mature and more, you know, experienced. You know why? Because working a lot of comedy rooms, you eat a lot of really greasy food, and you eat all that greasy food, it slides right in, and then it slides slides right right out. out. And you don't don't smoke, but you started your comedy career back when smoking was still allowed in a lot of bars. I used to smoke. I quit uh, about 10 years ago. No kidding. Congratulations. So you quit when you were 20? What, did you start smoking when you were 13? What the fuck? I had a little uh, I had a little cigarette mobile in my playpen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. The only five year old wakes up with a morning hack. <laughs> I did too. That was no, the- <laughs> That's awesome. But that was secondhand where- emphysema. Thanks, Dad. Where can they find you at, bro? <laughs> uh they can go visit my website, uh, Tom Myers dot US M Y E R S dot US. I'm on Facebook at Comedian Tom Myers, all one word. Say that again, Tom what it dot US who? Tom Myers dot US. Oh, you spelled your last name. Okay, I thought that there was an end of the dot US. It's Myers M Y E R S. Right. And look him up there at his website, Tom Myers dot US. The schedule's there, videos are there, my film reel is there and everything, because I do uh, movies and all that kind of thing. Yeah, you were just in a little uh, movie that you were telling me about. You had some creepy scene at the end. Finish your social media yeah. and then tell us about the movie. Um, it was, uh, well, my Twitter feed is at Tom, the little underscore, so the little dash underline, Myers, Tom underscore Myers, uh, YouTube.com slash Tom Myers. And then I have a couple of uh, CDs that are available for sale on the website. The last one. Uh, Pitchforks, Torches, and Other Random Thoughts it was actually recorded in Bel Air, so you're supporting a, harf, a project that was conceived and recorded and edited entirely uh, in Harford County. I was conceived and edited in all, entirely <laughs> in Harford County. You were edited. <laughs> my daddy always told me I got my start, start the same place I was going to end up. In <laughs> jail? I, no, no. <laughs> Dad, I wasn't conceived in jail. The wasn't in the room? Yeah, kind of, no, I was conceived in the in a drug in a uh, smuggled in drug fueled sex heart attack. No, I was, That's the way to go. I was conceived in the back seat of a car in the graveyard. <laughs> so a hearse. Yeah, yeah. Well, you. Was I didn't just, mean to bring your joke down, but no, it wasn't a hearse. joke. That was reality. <laughs> the problem is that ain't no joke. I was conceived. My mom and dad were just dating. They were on a double date with another couple. Apparently, Hanky Panky started taking place. The two separated. Mom and dad stayed in the car. The other couple walked off into the graveyard. We were conceived on the same night, supposed to be born on the same day. (laughs) I was born two weeks early. Tina was born two weeks late. We were born a month apart. Conceived on the same exact night in the same damn graveyard. Wow. <laughs> Not that I needed to know that much inf- information about my conception, but my parents felt necessary to tell it to me. Speaking of uh, people fucking and making babies in graveyards, my <laughs> CDs are... <laughs> the, this CD is called uh, Pitchforks, Torches, and Other Random Thoughts. And the, the, the This is picture, the most recent one. This is the most recent okay. one. As you can see, it's a nice little drawing. It's th- this, Which this, is up on the web right now. Yeah, you, this, the CD design is uh, was actually by a friend of mine, uh, Dan Davis. He's a uh, filmmaker, director, actor, and as you can see, a very good graphic artist. Absolutely. It's basically a cartoon drawing of a theater with my name and the CD title on it. Mm-hmm. And in front, if you notice, it's a very angry mob yes. with pitchforks, torches, mm-hmm. and holding other random objects. And your picture is on the wall. Like on the theater back. Is that you? That's, that's me. That's yep. a, those, yeah. those are some uh, little 
uh, promotional like, shots of me. Uh, like come, so they're coming to get you, huh? <laughs> yep, that's nice. the, sort of it. So that gives you an idea that my comedy isn't necessarily for the entire family. <laughs> yeah, that's how every comedy show Tom Myers performs. That it turns into a witch hunt. <laughs> All of a sudden, it goes medieval. People revert back to the 1600s, and it's a Salem witch hunt. And the very first CD that I have is 10 years ago. I, it's called uh, Words of Mass Destruction. I talk about uh, Howard Dean, Martha Stewart, a little bit of Rush Limbaugh, uh, George W. Bush, even Bill Clinton. So this is kind of out of date, and the sound quality is a little shit. But uh, <laughs> so if you want to, so if you want a really crappy CD, dollars <laughs> that talks about crap that ain't even relevant anymore. But you know, please buy both. But you know, I recommend you listen to Pitchforks, Torches, and other random thoughts first because that's the more that's the more recent one, and it's a great uh, sound quality. The, it was recorded and edited and everything by uh, a guy named uh, Zach Trees ZT. He actually does the sound for the shows at the. Uh, at the Oyster House, oh, and, and, very he, good. and he record, he recorded me, and the the, the quality on this is just I, I can't say enough about it. It was it was resources and money, very well spent. I, I could not be hap- happier with the work that went into this. Well, hopefully you guys will go by check out Tom Myers us, order his latest CD, and follow Tom Myers on Twitter, Tom underscore Myers. It's at Tom underscore Myers on Twitter. Follow him. Keep up with him. When he comes to a town near you, be sure you go out and check him out. It'll be a fun night of entertainment and comedy. Tom's a great guy with a great spin on life. You know, his, yep. his view is a little different, um, and you got to pay attention. He, he, guys like me, I usually get Tom's jokes when I'm on the way home because <laughs> my wife has to explain them to me. <laughs> I'm like, Pam, baby, you were laughing your ass off. What was so funny? All right, so this is what he meant when he said this. No, all right, now I get it. You got to dumb it down for my audience a little bit. You're a little too educated. But you're still doing a great job. I appreciate and, uh, it. Thank much, you. Much success to you. Thank and, you. And uh, no, you got an open invitation, brother. You know where the st- funny part is. All right, so I sent Tom the address. Right. As we set this day up. So... <laughs> <laughs> I get a message on Facebook. I am outside. Hopefully, it's the right house. So I go out. No, Tom. Outside. I was joking. <laughs> I was joking, too. Because yeah, I, I was actually knocking on someone's door. <laughs> so I go outside to look for him because the dogs haven't barked like right. they heard a car pull up. i kind of positive he's not at the right place. So I go out there. No, Tom. So I jump back on Facebook and send him, hey, dude, you're not at my house. So call me. Call me. It's 2335, ain't it? No, it's 2523, dumbass. Come up the hill. So he, he made it here, but he's over there knocking on somebody else's door. And the fact of the matter is, my neighbors are like kind of suspicious of me anyway. <laughs> Why? Because I don't hardly ever leave the house. And when I do leave the house, it's on some loud ass Harley with eight hangers yeah. on it, you know, dressed like I'm ready to go rob a bank. Or I'm walking my two vicious but serial killer oh, pit bull dogs. They're, they're Tim, you live in Harford County. That shouldn't make you stand out from anybody. No. No, but the fact that I live in this neighborhood, I mean, there's people here with upstanding jobs and stuff. These people like career folks. <laughs> you know, and then there's me. Who, Curtis Beulah? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, here's my neighbors. There's Across from me is a preacher. Swear to God on my grandmother's grave, his name is Reverend Love. <laughs> no. The greatest WWE reference or WWF reference back when it was the World Wrestling Federation, the Reverend Love. Y'all remember Love, Reverend Love? You know, had the white suit with the red yeah. shirt and the beet red face that looked like he had way too much self tanner on. That that looked like me out in the beach all day. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tom goes beat goes on sunning. It goes from what'd you say from pale to melanoma. Right. I don't tan. I'm melanoma. <laughs> this neighbor is a police officer. And the guy to this side of me is a retired military guy. And the guy on this side of me owns his own shipping company. Like packaging distribution. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the hell he's distributing. I just know he's distributing packaging. <laughs> he doesn't come over much. And me, this is, this is our six-house little cube here. And who's not the upstanding citizen in this little scenario? Pam. We've been trying to <laughs> 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 Threw her under the bus. Them, them damn accountants. You can't trust an accountant. 
<laughs> Look what Rocky's accountant did to him when he went to Russia. <laughs> he went over there to try to defend America and beat up the big blonde Russian and defend our way of life. And all it was was his accountant fucked him deep and sent him back to the <laughs> suburbs of Philadelphia. Oh, don't say that. My accountant is uh, my accountant's Ken Water. The, uh-huh. the com- a comedian. I actually have another comedian. <laughs> Wait a minute. You've got a comedian counting your money? You're a fool. <laughs> very, very good accountant. Very, very funny guy, though. Work with him a lot. Yeah, you're going to think it's funny when he goes, hey, guess what? You're broke. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to tell me that. I already know I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> I already know I'm broke. And my accountant is an IRS agent. <laughs> You are the deep one screwed the <laughs> deepest. <laughs> She's my ex-wife, too. <laughs> but uh, bomb. That's the triple. <laughs> There's no better joke than that. And that is Tim, reality. You know this one. The rule of three in comedy. He just hit the perfect... <laughs> Yes, you I hit, hit it out of the park with you that You hit the one. trifecta, and that wasn't even a joke. No, nope. <laughs> that was the real story. <laughs> that his, tr- his wife truly is an accountant and IRS agent. His wife, his ex- ex-wife is ex- truly the accountant. That's tonight. correct. That is beautiful. You cannot make shit like that. <laughs> nope. Nah, nah. <laughs> and you wonder why Ralph sits in his bathroom at night with a bottle of Bible and a gun and contemplates his <laughs> future every day. This is really what I picked, and now I'm hanging around with this fat bastard on some makeshift internet radio station with some comedian that thinks he is somebody named Tom Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> Like he said, a typical Harford County resident. That, that's sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Boys and girls, we're going to wrap up this Get Yourself Over the Hump Wednesday edition of the Walrus and Jen Show without Jen. You know what? Some of the best shows we've had have been recently without <laughs> Jen. Uh, you and uh, Dustin sat in for yeah. the other day. Now you and Tom set in for her this day. Jen, you might be looking for a job next Wednesday. She's but home Tom, sick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what she said. Well, she was up early this morning. I was she's, up at 5 o'clock. She said she was throwing up. She, she, what the problem is, I ain't got no dick disease. That's what that's the problem what it is. is. Ain't getting no dick. Her man's coming home from the military tonight. <laughs> yeah, the, we, we think. If you hear... She's getting a, she's getting a, med, she's getting a uh, medical procedure done called an adedictomy. Yes, that's, that's correct. Yes. Well, if the weather holds up. Adi- yeah. Or adedict in me. As long as she doesn't get cock blocked by Mother Nature, she'll be all right. This, I told her this snowstorm, because here's the thing. They lied to the boy's mama. I told you that at the beginning oh, of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's they right. Li- they told the boy's mama that he wasn't going to get home till Friday. Now, you've put that out there in the universe, and the universe realizes you're lying to your mama so that you can come home on Wednesday night and get a full night of booty in before you got to go see your mama on Thanksgiving Day. You the ain't universe, coming home karma's Friday. Karma's going to screw you. You won't get home till Friday. You told your mama you'll be home Friday. Guess what? Mother Nature's going to screw you. You'll be home Friday. Leave leave it to something with a uh, with with a with a feminine name to it. The cock Nature. block someone. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> every fucking time it happens. Walrus Nation, this is the last show for this week. We broadcast today, and then take this time to celebrate your family and count all the things that you are thankful for. Have a great holiday weekend. We'll be back here on Monday with another edition of the Walrus and Jen Show, but there just won't be no Jen. She's not going to be back until Wednesday as she's celebrating her man's time at home. He ships back out again on December the 3rd, which is Wednesday. So uh, she'll be back here on Wednesday with us. And we hope you all have a wonderful time with your friends and family. Eat way too much turkey, watch way too much football, and consume way too much alcohol. It's what Thanksgiving is all about. That's right. Find a way to love yourselves, Walrus Nation. When you do, spend a little time loving somebody else. And remember that the wiggle is your way to shake the negativity out of your life. Get a good, clear focus of the positive things that splash a little happiness back into your happy cup. When you need to, get your wiggle on. Don't let people piss you off because those that push your buttons control you. I feel like I need to buy something now after that. That sounded like a public service. I I got some advertisement. I'll sell your uh, restaurant. (laughs) (laughs) I got one. Thank you. Let's do a public uh, give a public service now for your restaurant. Where where can you go? Good margaritas. Please tell me you've got good margaritas. Well, after a few, after you have a few of them, it doesn't matter. They're all good. Water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could be making them with wop mop water after the third. <laughs> did I just say wop mop water? Yeah, you did. I didn't mean it that way. Yeah, that that's came okay. Out they they make it. How very good. racist of you. I know, right? <laughs> a, a Polak has no right to call the anybody place, else names. There'll be a few people coming to visit you later. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> 
Th- th- no, th- this may not be the last show of the week. This may be the last show ever. So you yeah. probably should. <laughs> <laughs> the Hindenburg, you know. This is our first one <laughs> and our last one. <laughs> well, we missed the Titanic. What are we going to do now? <laughs> yep, invite Tom Myers to your radio show and watch it go down in scorching flames. <laughs> but uh, the place is called Plaza Mexico. Plaza Mexico. 2314 Bel Air Road in Falston. If you're in the area, if you know where the Denny's used to be, same building. It's right oh, there at yeah, the junction yeah. of Route I know exactly 1. exactly where it is. 1 and 152. On the right-hand side is The you're food going is so good, we have people come from the other Mexican restaurants who are our competitors yeah. because they say the food there tastes much better. I'm not bullshitting. They actually say that. That's wow. good. Yeah. Now, they actually say that. Before we sign off... I'm going to give you some homework. Uh-oh. I I want you to go back and listen to this show, and if I'm accurate, you said the word actually 146 times in the hour and a half you've been on. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just had to bust your chops. I know I, I noticed that when you were when you were articulating the word actually is one of your favorite words. I don't know how many times you said it. I'm just guessing at 146. <laughs> but we should go back and count them. We'll run a contest. If you can guess, guess how, how many, many times Tom actually will send you, you know, nothing, a bill that you can pay for us because we can't get no advertising. <laughs> we'll send you the Comcast bill and keep our internet on. You can pay it <laughs> for us. How's that sound? Welcome to the Walrus Nation. Reverse uh, reverse sweepstakes. Absolutely. Yeah, the lucky winner gets to send us money. Yeah, you get to send me a hundred bucks so I can pay the cable bill. Are, you're not turning into one of those um, telepreachers, are you? The televangelists, I are you? I did that already. They kicked me off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> After five minutes. No, I, well, I wasn't asking them for money. I kept sending them to send me your unwanted women, drugs, and guns. <laughs> That's what Warren Zevon, uh, that, that was that song, right? The, yeah. Uh, Warren Zevon? Yeah. Yeah. Lawyers, lawyers, guns, guns and, and money. money. Yeah. Women, drugs, and guns. I, was, I don't give a damn about lawyers. If you do it right, you don't need a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. The, the lawyer's there as in case to be the wingman. Sure. That's right. Yes. Don't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> oh, dear God in heaven. <laughs> Your restaurant got a bar in it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just ask them about margaritas. It's got to have a bar in it. Well, just because they serve alcohol doesn't mean they have a, a reg, like but, a bar, but, bar area. You have a bar area. Yeah. Like Applebee's, Ruby Tuesdays, you know, you've got dining area. Big screens. we got foot. we got uh You know where to find me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The kind of place somebody can come in and Football, kind of... base, uh, Oriole games when it's in season, and because it's a Mexican restaurant, soccer, if you know that kind of thing. Football. Go Football. Oh! <laughs> For a little guy, you got big lungs. I'm about to pass out. Oh! That's what not smoking will do for you. I could bring some of them women I know there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the Latino. Yeah, yeah. he's got them. For an Italian dude, he's got a large stable of Latino women. I mean, that follow him around. Is that dude. same? I mean, is that same line of uh, latitude? Well, he uh, says they the follow him around. I think it's the group of women he has chained up under his stairwell in his basement. They're just sending well, out, "Hey, it. we're hungry. Hey. <laughs> you haven't fed us yet today." Hey. Everybody's got to have a hobby. That's right. You know, you know come hey. on. <laughs> I collect motorcycles, you collect stamps, he collects dead hookers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 lo- I love that stamps is actually a euphemism for, yep, we'll go ahead and sign off. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the lawyers haven't arrived yet. so yeah. we'll... And the drones haven't found us, so we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Have... Have a great holiday weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday, Walrus Nation. Be sure you follow Tom Myers. Look us up, The Walrus and Jen Show, on Facebook. Like our page. Follow me on Twitter. And Tom has two CDs available. (laughs) Or as alien eyes as he's wearing them on his forehead now. Words of Destruction. And uh, what is it? Words of... Words of Mass Destruction. Words of Mass Destruction. And... Pitchforks, torches, and other random thoughts. Be sure you check out Tom Myers on all his social media and the next outlets. One, the next one will have a title, I promise, that's not so wordy. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to work Monday? Yeah, but I can call in. All right, we'll 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 we'll, 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 we'll we are addicted. No, listen, to I, I say so. I say actually. Let's count how many times Tim goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the walrus in me. I stutter. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Bob Newhart has his stutter. It, Tim's got his. A blah, 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 blah. It's where my tongue ring gets stuck on my walrus tusks. <laughs> <laughs> that's the clicking you hear. <laughs> I thought that's why you needed the helmet when you rode. I need the helmet for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, he needs that around the house. <laughs> I'm not allowed to play with your body. <laughs> And I'm usually not allowed to be by myself. That's why Wealthy comes to babysit me. <laughs> this is taking a huge twist in the wrong direction. Walrus Nation, love yourself. Spend a little time loving each other. Tom, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. you yep. here, brother. You're welcome back anytime. Yep. Ralphie, glad you woke up in time to be here. Yeah, Don't- man. Listen, it's, you're not paid to be here. It's free. I, I'm not. Yeah, but you know me. I'm just thankful that you showed up at all. Because I didn't... <laughs> I'm just glad that your car is still operating. I was worried it had been the rain, and the, I was just concerned about your car situation. And uh, anybody out there got a good car for sale or works at a car dealership that could give Ralphie a good deal, he's in the market. He's got a lovely, what is it, a Honda Fit, Nissan Fit? 2009 Honda Fit. 2009 Honda Fit that he's trading in, and uh, he's looking to make a car deal. Somebody hook Ralphie up. Help him out, man. We got to get the man some transportation. I'm tired of him hanging out in my damn house. He's got to be. <laughs> and you got to have a little further radius than Abingdon. We got to get him into Haverty Grace and Aberdeen. You need advertising. Absolutely. <laughs> I need advertisers. And, and you know what? Once he gets his car, we can. He can really let his hair down. We can take him all the way out to um, Norrisville. Absolutely, oh, Norrisville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you're the big world now. Well, yeah. yeah. But you don't know what my commute is. <laughs> yeah, he works in Montgomery County. <laughs> oh, his commute is like seventy-five miles one way each day. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's Italian. I think he's Jew- Jewish. Aren't they the ones that wandered in the desert for forty years? <laughs> he wanders somewhere between here and Montgomery <laughs> County. The majority is like. And you, you know, you know what? What a, if? Uh, if you had a female co-host here who would probably say, yep, it was because Moses was a man. He didn't want to stop to ask her directions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you figure back then there wasn't that many landmarks around. He was in the middle of a desert. It wasn't like he could go to the fourth tree and turn left. All right, you see that little pile of sand? Go down there and make a left. Go past three piles of sand. You'll see a... Uh, Skeleton uh, <laughs> of a camel. <laughs> turn right there. Turn right there. Third rock on the left, and wait. Yeah, and hopefully some water will spew out of it. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Walrus Nation. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Enjoy your turkey. We'll see y'all Monday. Peace, Walrus Nation. Later. Asta. <laughs>